المرسلين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آله إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله and so in the third raka of Taraweeh today Shaykh Abdul Ghaffar he read the ayah in tu'adhibuhum fa innahum ibaduk wa in taghfir lahum fa innaka anta al-aziz al-hakim this ayah in this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's recording a conversation that will take place in this whole passage a conversation that will take place on the day of judgment between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Isa alayhi salam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask Isa alayhi salam did you tell the people to worship you and your mother? And Isa السلام, will say, I'm free from this. I did not do this. Subhanak. Glory be to you. And then the ayat go on. And at the end of the passage, Isa السلام, will say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, that if you punish them, then they are your slaves. But if you forgive them, then you are the exalted in might, you are the most wise. Now there are many angles you can look at this ayah from, but I want to connect it with a hadith. And that hadith is, it's narrated that the Prophet ﷺ, one day he was reciting this ayah. And another ayah from Surah Ibrahim. And he's repeating this ayah and he's crying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to Jibreel, he says, Ya Jibreel, idhab ila Muhammad, fasalhu ma yubkik, that go to Muhammad and ask him, alayhi salatu wasalam, what is causing you to cry? Why are you crying? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. But the reason this is being recorded is for you and I to also learn and know. So Jibreel comes to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he asks him, now what is causing you to cry? And the Prophet will then explain what he explains. He's concerned for what? He's concerned for his ummah. He's saying, Allahumma ummati. The Prophet وسلم, and many of the scholars said this is the night prayer. In the night prayer, he's crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, thinking about this ayah, that if you punish them, then they are your slaves. But if you forgive them, then you are the exalted. You are the most wise. And he's crying and thinking about the ummah, my dear brothers and sisters, thinking about you and I. This is mahabba. This is love. This is the love that the Prophet ﷺ had for each and every one of you. There's a hadith which is known as the hadith of shifa'a, how the Prophet ﷺ will intercede for us on the day of judgment. On the day of judgment, we have to understand is a day when everybody will be concerned with their own state. Yes, think about the person you love the most. Is it your mother? Is it your spouse? Is it your children? Whoever it may be. That on that day, everybody is concerned with their own state. And then, because the situation will be so terrifying, and the people won't know what to do, some of them will say, let's go to uh, an individual who can intercede on our behalf. And it's a long hadith, and I'm summarizing it. And then they will go to Prophet Adam salam, And they will ask Adam salam, to intercede on their behalf. And they will say that you are the father of mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala breathed into you, your soul. And Adam salam, will basically say that this is not for me. He's saying that Allah is angry today like he's never been angry before. And he will say, nafsi, nafsi. I'm worried about myself, myself. Then the people will go to Nuh salam. Same thing will happen. Nuh salam in the end will say, it's not for me. He's worried about his own state. Then they will go to Ibrahim salam. Same thing. Ibrahim salam. they will say, you're the Khalil of Allah. And Ibrahim salam will say, it's not for me. And then they will go to Musa salam. And then they will go to Isa salam. And eventually they will go to the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. On the day of judgment, they will go to the Prophet wasallam and they will ask the Prophet wasallam. The people will ask him to intercede. And the Prophet والسلام, will say that this is for me. And the Prophet will fall into sujood under the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with praises that have not been heard before. And then the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask the Prophet وسلم, that what is it? What's you, what is it that you want? And the Prophet والسلام, at that moment, his concern will be the ummah. My ummah, my ummah. Wallahi, when you think about these narrations, my dear brothers and sisters, it honestly, it's shocking the love that the Prophet ﷺ had for, for us. And how far we have detached ourselves from the Prophet ﷺ. There's a narration of Aisha radiallahu anha. She says that one day the Prophet ﷺ came home. And the Prophet ﷺ was basically, he was in a good mood. He was... Um, 
and in a joyful mood. So Aisha radiallahu anha saw that this is an opportunity to ask the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to make du'a for her. So she said to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, "Udullah ali." That make du'a to the Prophet uh, make du'a to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me. Yes, then the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he makes a du'a. He says, "Allahumma ghfir li Aisha." Oh Allah, forgive Aisha. Ma taqaddama min dhanbiha wa ma ta'akhkhar. Those sins that she's committed in the past and those that she will commit in the future. Ma asarrat wa ma a'lanat. What she's done in private and what she's done openly. Aisha radiyallahu anha, she says when she heard this hadith, she became so happy. She was, the narration mentions, she started to laugh out of joy. This is the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam making this dua. That, oh Allah, forgive Aisha, done. This is the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, she says to Aisha, she say, he says sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ayyusurruki duaai, does my dua make you happy? Does it bring you pleasure? And she says, of course. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and listen to this very carefully. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Wallahi, innaha la duaai li ummati fi kulli salah. He said, I swear by Allah, this dua that I just made for you is the dua that I make for my ummah in every salah. In every salah, the Prophet is asking forgiveness for you and I, asking forgiveness for his ummah. This is mahabba, my dear brothers and sisters. And the sad reality is, is that many of us don't know the Prophet And that's something we have to change. Yes, we all claim to love him. But how true is that claim? How can you love somebody you don't know? It's very difficult to do. You can't love a person you don't know nothing about that person. So the first step we all must take is to learn about the Prophet ﷺ. Read a book on seerah. Read Kitab al-Shama'il. Yes, that talks about the akhlaq of the Prophet ﷺ and his demeanor and his manad. Read and learn about this man ﷺ. And let's try to follow in his footsteps. Let's gain that mahabba for him and let's follow in his footsteps and live the life that he وسلم, wanted us to live. And that's a life of obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, from the rights of the Prophet and I'll end on this, is that we send salat upon him. That we send salat upon the Prophet وسلم. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah wa malaikatu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyu alladheena amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that indeed Allah and his angels send salat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa All you who believe send salat upon him. Ask ourselves, when was the last time we were walking and we sat down and we said, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammad. When we just sat down and sent salutations upon the Habibullah upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there are so many fawaid. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam, he said, Awla nasi bi yawm al-qiyama, akhtharuhum alayya salatan. The closest of you to me, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on the day of judgment is who? Is the one who sent the most salat upon me. The one who was continuously sending salam and salawat upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In one hadith, and I'll end on this hadith, when the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked by Ubay ibn Ka'b, he said, how much of my supplication should I dedicate to sending salat upon you? And, you know, the hadith mentions a quarter, and the Prophet sallallahu said, that's khair, but if you do more, it's better. He said, a half, two thirds, and then in the end, Ubay said, all of my supplication is for you. And what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, if that's the case, then your worries will be taken care of and your sins will be forgiven. You have a worry in this life, send salat upon the Prophet ﷺ. You're having difficulties in your relationship, you're having difficulties with your children, you're having difficulties in business, send salat upon the Prophet ﷺ. And your, your affairs will be eased. Yes, your affairs will be eased. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of your affairs and your sins will be forgiven. You get benefit in this life and you get benefit in the akhirah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He makes us of those who love the Prophet and follow in His footsteps.